weapons, even as five positions, they somehow always seem to get farm with that splinter boss. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Seneco have um, the uh, at the blink dagger or the ether lens, or maybe even both if this game goes long enough. Oh yes, I missed this hero. So yeah, we have. It's probably favoring VP, but then again, Navi has so many stuns, so we can't really count them out either. Yeah, I see what you're saying, because they can take very good fights, and because their stuns aren't ultimates, they can go fight after fight, as long as they have the damage, without God Strength. And God Strength, to me, I think, is that their only really long cooldown, other than the Winter's Curse and Epicenter? You see, is that the only big <laughs> cooldown next to I, these I, two <laughs> other skills? I only realized after I started How the question. How did this happen? Yes. Prepare That's the battle. only long cooldown. So this whole mess if is you don't over. count the other two. Yep. But for VP, time. you're absolutely correct. All of their heroes have pretty long day, cooldowns. Day, the shortest one actually being 70 seconds for uh, for Rolling Thunder. Yeah. So, oh, Roger, getting a nice chest there. Don't worry, we we caught his success on camera because I I. I I'm very curious about these Enigma builds. He doesn't have a lot of money, so I think he might have given a ring over to Pasha. Yeah. Yep. Uh, just because uh, we discussed again and again, Ring of Health or Ring of Regen, and it doesn't look like there's any sort of established which one's better yet. Mm -hmm. Mind Control really favors... I mean, Liquid as a whole just really favors the Ring of Health, but we see Roger going for the Ring of Regen every single time. Yes. So, <laughs> as we get a nice combination of voice lines, let's uh, talk about these lanes. Pasha, he's probably going to be a bit on his own versus this uh, crystallize as well as the Winter Wyvern. Is he going to be able to get a decent amount of farm on this Pangolier? No, but that's not the intention. Pangolier is going to get some levels and that's all he needs. He could be in trouble here. On oh, Pasha. magical. He wasn't expecting him. They get all four bounty runes for the side of Na'Vi. Pasha, he's already used his swashbuckle to try and escape. And Seneko, a few more right clicks. He doesn't have the Arctic Burn to be able to slow him down. So this is going to be a very long chase. And I don't think he will get the kill as uh, Magical walks to his mid lane. And I guess because he's a DK, he realized that the block on the lane isn't that important. Because it's uh, not another ranged hero. So he can go for this aggression. That allow them to get these extra runes. I expect Magical to have a little bit of an edge on the mid lane. Because DK is generally best against physical harass, and Lesh mostly has uh, magical harass. But at the same time, it's a DK, so he's probably going to be fine because he has absurd amounts of regen. Yeah, and Zayak gets a nice impale onto Solo. He's now out of mana. They follow up, actually, with the sun into Busy, but that's not enough to clear through the illusions. Now they are, and remember, each of these worth a nice juicy two gold for the Narcos level one. Yeah, they take like five bloody hits and you get two golds. It seems nice. Yeah, to, no one, he did level the Breathe Fire level one, and that does seem to have kept back Magical Siesta a tiny amount. I mean, that's pretty much the basic thing to do, because you really want to make sure that you get the first range creep from the wave. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just so important. You can't be behind that much in experience if you get that first range creep denied. So this top lane, Pasha, he now finally is by himself. We see Roger. This is what he did last time. Just farming aggressively in actually the Na'Vi jungle instead of their own. Yeah, and the nice thing about this is that you don't have to block the pool camps if you just kill the pool camps with Enigma. So I love how uh, Roger always does that. And on top of that, um, you can use the Eidolons to harass as well when the enemy supports walks into the jungle. So... You don't have the advantage of killing your own range creeps, which gives a little bit of fun to the carry, but you're also making sure that whatever happens, they can't get off a pool. As uh, Zy and Solo, they've just been trading up against each other, and you can you can see Solo. It's, he knows he's never going to get this pull off because Zyak's being annoying. But Ramsey's level three to Zyak's level one, uh, two points in the mirror image, but he's just shooing away this annoying bug. Lizzie, level 3 as well though. Once again, didn't take a point into Caustic Finale. It's nice in lane, but the level 1 point isn't that good. Yeah, they do pop down the sentry. Blizzy 
has one on his own as well as a quelling blade if he has an idea where it is. And he 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 should see that, right? There you go, the pigs do come out. Was that the only sentry? Looks like it was the only sentry. However, Solo already has another one in his quick buy, so it's gonna be pretty much fine. Yeah, th this bottom lane, it's going to be sentry walls. It is placed here, so kind of deviously, they might not find it. And no one a uh, tiny bit ahead in this mid lane, actually. It's always easy on heroes like Dragonite with the Quelling Blade to get the early lead, just because you have such a nice animation, pretty good damage too. But eventually, Magical should get the edge just because of his magic damage harassment. I have to say, no one is doing a pretty good job so far. Yeah. Do you think um, the build that no one maybe. goes for is his main objective this game to be an initiator? So he'll go for the blink, maybe the BKB, and back to the Shadow Blade. He really just wants to be landing Dragon Tails, or will he go something else? For sure. I would expect him to get blink in as one of his two first items. Maybe drums first. Uh, but I do feel like Radiant blink is the way to go scanning. this game. We're coming up to the four minute mark. There's a bit of a contest here. Magical goes for that stun and it gets a regen rune in his bottle. So he'll be able to spend his entire mana pool and do it all over again. They have the stun onto the Naga Siren. She's pretty deep, sitting in the Sandstorm. The Sandstorm is only level two, but it's a nice bit of harass onto Ramses. She has so much armor, but the difference between a Naga and a TB is that a TB starts with like 400 HP, but Naga is already at 900 level four. I'm trying to say, Icefro, please pay attention. <laughs> we don't deserve this. We don't Nato deserve this. getting really low. Yeah, it's, uh, and he's gonna get the kill over here on Pasha. You just achieved the first blood. Thanks hit like and truck. have fun. Yeah, it's, uh, greatly underestimated them. And no point in the cold embrace. Magical going for the stack here. Looks like he is gonna get a double stack because he used this player to cut the trees. Very heads up play by him. Gonna yeah, be farming them up once he gets level 6. Yeah, I guess this is one of the things I didn't think about the Lashrak is that he's one of those heroes who is able to clear through the jungle very, very quickly. So has that nice farm acceleration. We're still uh, looking for another kill. It feels like these lanes... They have been fairly tame, but maybe that's a consequence of having Roger in the jungle. And this is very strange. Where are... I? Ah. I was really confused about Crystallize's net worth and his quick buy. Because he has absolutely no items on him. But Seneco actually has his Midas recipe on him. So we're gonna see a Sven Midas coming out very soon. Did miss that catapult though. I saw that <laughs> Crystallize. Well, uh, luckily the stream didn't, but you've now named the chain. And Pasha, still not level 6, needs to be careful. He swashbuckled in, so he's not going to be able to get away. But Roger is there with the Manifest, so I don't think they have enough to bring down Pasha. Maybe if he actually had items, he could, instead of uh, Midas recipe, he could have killed. And no one already level 6. Both these heroes are able to pressure towers pretty hard. But Magical with no points in the tower on the day, he won't be able to do that. Yeah, this is more of an anti-hero anti, anti -hero kind of build, where you just really want to have the setup for your own split earth. And it's pretty good against Dragonite, but as you said, you don't really have the tower pressure. Yeah, it does mean he uh, should be able to farm fairly fast, because the side of Na'Vi, even though VP have had this jungler, they are ahead, uh, at least in the net worth. Crystallize popping his ultimate to clear through these stacks, and he's actually built a Midas here on this fan. That's not an item I was expecting to see. Yeah, we've seen it before on Sven's, just to make... I mean, they're gonna spend the first 20 minutes of the game farming anyway, and that's generally the point where Midas has paid off, so... It fits his timings pretty well, even if it seems a little bit strange. Also, he benefits quite a bit from the attack speed. Yeah, so uh, DK TPing to this bottom lane does have one point Asha. in the Dragon Tail. But Pasha on this top lane with the first use of the Rolling Thunder. They have Roger. He is level 4. They pop the Manifest over on the Windswipe. And they will be able to get that kill. Crystallize the stun. Not in time to be able to save him. They've rotated Blizzy. Blizzy does have level 6. And are they going to need a, the epicenter? It looks like they don't. Sitting in the Sandstorm with the right clicks of Crystallize. Kills no, the Enigma. No. This buys a lot of space for 
for the Naga, and in this case, no one on the bottom lane who decided to move away from it. Feels like he can't really lane that well against Magical anymore. Yeah, Magical does have the one point in the type of KJ, but he's not looking to push yet. Attack. No one does have his ultimate coming back up, so maybe when he gets the mana. And um, how do you feel about the Soul Ring or mid Dragonite? Would you just feel it's unnecessary nowadays? Well, um, you generally funnel, funnel the regen with the career, um, and you do have the mana regen talent on level 10, so it's pretty nice to be able to spam Breathe Fire in lane, but at the same time, the moment you hit level 10, it's pretty much useless, so in most games, you would just rather have a Bracer. Yeah, and I guess uh, against this Lashrak, you know, the 12% extra magic resist that you're getting from these two Bracers, it really will pay off. Yeah, for sure. And having 1500 HP at 8 oh. minutes is Meanwhile, nice Blizzy though. on this top lane. Is he going to survive? They do have a sentry down. And he walks out the end of the rage from it. Back into the sandstorm. And he's going to be fine here. They don't quite know where he is. Pasha taking a lot of damage from that sandstorm. Radiance and not able to go for the swashbuckle. So Blizzy able to survive. And did get that kill over onto the Enigma. He almost killed Pasha as well. If he knew where the sentry was, he certainly would have Dyer's gone for it. But this was the safe attack. play. I can respect that. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. So no one Radiance has his trez completed, and well. hopefully we'll see him uh, queue up some sort of item that will give us an indication of the type of dragonite he wants to be. Meanwhile, magical with the two points of tie, Bonakide, they have taken the first tower of the game. Something you don't really expect a DK lineup not to get. Yeah. DK having a little bit of trouble right now pressuring this mid tower. He did get some damage, but it's kind of hard to commit to finishing at this the moment. Oh, oh. They were, they found Blizzy on the top lane. I uh... yeah, and they didn't even use like Rolling Thunder or a black hole. He just went down to Malefest as well as Swashbuckle. Yeah, they had the disarm slow from uh, Pasha, so it was just more than enough. And it looks like with that, they should be able to get these runes and even two for two split. And we look over the net worth and person who is far and ahead the leader is crystallized with this Midas. Yeah, he's having a great time. These kind of Sven games are just the best where you are being left completely alone. You can get your initial items and then you can start doing stuff. Dyer's top tower is under attack. So Soneko, he's still level four. Should hopefully he should be getting the the tome on either him or the next stats. The Nyx very close to his own level six here in this mid lane. Attack no one already used the stun, so they're not gonna be able to hold Zyx in position or anything more. And looks like Zyx is actually building a meteor hammer. First item. No arcane boots, no nothing, just straight meteor hammer. I mean, like didn't have enough <laughs> AOE stuns yet. Uh, I mean, I just love it. It's going to keep the combination going, and it will co contribute to the push of Na'Vi. So no one, Zyke, he's right. level 6. They don't have a sentry down. There isn't one here, and they've lost their tier 1 mid. It looks like they didn't want to defend it. And it's interesting to note as well, what we always forget about the Nyx, because it got added recently, is that he actually has a break now, which is very nice against DK. Yeah, uh, Zai, they have the stun, they have the god if they want it. They use the Wizard's Curse on top of this Rolling Thunder. So he's held in position, no one's doing a fair amount of damage to his own teammate. And now they're probably looking to go in, they pop the Veil, Blizzy. He has the stun, who's he looking to go for? But it's actually the Silent Zyx, he's getting very low. Blizzy held in position, they glimpse back the Nyx Assassin, they're able to kill off Blizzy as well. So VP, a big team fight here in this mid lane. Uh, he just didn't use any of his spells over on the Sand King. It, it looks like he was looking for some great suns, but wasn't able to find any. Yeah, he hesitated for a moment. Next thing you know, he was stuck in the static storm and couldn't really do anything. They tried to go on the DK, which I think is kind of questionable at this point, because he's just so tanky. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it was a really good point you made about the Nyx Assassin break, because you do rely on that uh, early armor as well as health regen. But, uh, you know, he hit him out of Vendetta before the rest of his team was there, just as it was fading to you know, get the early harass, but that meant they didn't have the break for the fight. Ramses at the same time also has a Midas, so Radiant both carries opting for a really greedy build here. And 
the, the greed of both the carries, what, who do you think this favors? Uh, I would have to say, I think Na'Vi, because that Sven is going to come online a bit sooner than this Naga, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, when both carries have a Midas, it doesn't really change that much about the matchup. They're both going to farm a little bit faster, but it's pretty in sync. No, because just Hand of Midas adds like a static amount of TPM. The, the bottom lane, the Rolling Thunder on Blizzy once again. The Winter's Curse is really nice. But Roger, he's actually putting the right clicks into Blizzy. But Pasha finds the swashbuckle in the trees. Great work here by the side of VP. These Winter's Curse, it feels like they've been very nice. But they still haven't been able to save anyone's life. Yeah, and this should be another tower for VP. They've done a really good job buying a lot of space for Naga. He's just been farming non-stop. And it's not like VP isn't doing anything. Because they took every single tier 1 that Navi has right now. Yeah, they're still making movements without their, their Naga Siren. And, you know, she's felt she's had such a good game that she was able to go for this hand of Midas. And Magical, we've seen him get a bit involved with this push in the bottom lane. But it looks like he's just waiting for this Yule Scepter before he really starts getting involved in the team fights. Yeah, and he's getting really close too. Meanwhile, Sven did finish up his Echo Saber and he's now waiting for the BKB. And I feel like the moment they get BKB on Sven, they're really going to be trying to make stuff happen. Because I don't see how this VP lineup can ever take down a BKB Sven. Dayak, he's going through the Radiant Jungle, really hoping to find the, the Courier or someone they can gank. But it looks like this Vendetta, it's not going to pay off and it's now worn off. Magical does have his heals in the career, so they could try to do something, but Blizzy does not have a blink yet, so finding an initiation is going to oh, be quite tough for now. They I found think. Zayak in the trees, they even managed to get the science, and Pasha doesn't need the swashbuckle with the help of Roger. They get that kill. He just stuck around even after his vendetta faded, and they were smart enough to go through the trees. Right, so Roger finished up on his Helm of the oh. Dominator and is now Radiant's working towards the BGB. Magical, I think, is in real trouble here in this bottom lane. They have a nice Winter's Curse from Seneko, but Magical, he misses the stun follow-up, and now he's in real danger. He does actually get the kill over on the Pangolin, but no one has a stun pretty damn soon. They have vision for the glimpse if they need to use it. He's sticking down to the Corrosive Breath there, but actually drops the last tick of the Thunderstrike. <laughs> That's where you're really happy you put two points in. Oh, Sonoko, they found him. They don't have the kinetic field for a little bit longer. No one. He doesn't have a blink. So he's not able to connect with that dragon tail. He is actually going first item BKB here on no one. Yeah, very interesting. I guess they just really want to make sure they can win these fights. Like, they're just going to wait for Navi to run at them. And when they do, he's going to be so tanky. He's going to be like a bloody wall. Yeah, losing Magical in this bottom lane, it, it was pretty costly. He was doing fairly well on his farm, but he picks up this Yule set and goes down instantaneously. Magical going through a BKB as well, and I don't even blame him. BP has so much magic damage. Yeah, it's, There's it's... finally a blink now on Blizzy, so they could try to make something happen. Yeah, because when we were looking at the Navi draft, we really appreciated the fact that they had so many stuns. But they're the ones sitting behind in kills here. Radiance top tower is they under do attack. have um, an Ogre Club on the Sven, so they should be getting a BKB on him fairly soon. But I agree with you. It feels like they're quite stuck on their side of the map right now. Regeneration. Yeah, I don't uh, quite know why, uh, why they haven't been able to level up the aggression. It does feel like this Nyx Assassin... He hasn't been able to set up for the kills that they were looking for. We, uh, we saw him look through the other side of the map. But the rest of the team, you know, they're just not there to be able to follow up if he starts off an init initiation. Looks like VP might be setting up for a smoke, yeah? Uh, the but they don't have a smoke. Okay. Yeah, they, they don't have a smoke. They're just yeah, walking they together. So it looks like they could just be setting up for a push instead. But it's kind of strange to me because Dragonite is just like 200 gold away from his TKB. Yeah, but they have managed to find Zayak. He pops his Vendetta, but they do have the dust. They're glimpsing him back. They're not going to commit anything at Suneko on this high ground. But now his Arctic Burn is worn off. So he's not able to get the Winter's Radiant's Curse down. Oh, 
Now Arctic Burn, he was saving it for just the right moment to use the Winter's Curse, but then it ran out, so he wasn't able to commit forward. And now this tier 2 tower, it feels like it might be in real trouble here from no one's DK. Yeah, and Crystallize is also just a little bit away from his BKB, so... Very awkward timings here for both teams, but GP does get away with this tier 2 tower. At the same time, Navi just picks BP's bottom tier 2 though. Yeah, Magical able to get that trade, but it looks like PP, they're not happy. They want to be the ones coming out in advantage of towers. The Nako TP's in. Uh, the split boss, it's not actually going to be enough to put them back. No one more than happy to tank this tower to protect his creeps. Smoke gonna come out from Mavi here. It does miss Magical, that's a bit unfortunate. They have the Blink Dagger as well as the Veil, but the side of EP, they seem to be reading the movements of Na'Vi very well, realizing they finally are coming to defend, and they're just going to be able to walk away with ease. At the same time, Sven still a little bit ahead of this Naga, but oh, it's Zayak, quite scary. I think he's managed to set up for their first kill with the Veil, with the Barrows. Like, they don't need anything else. No one thinking about turning around Roger with the stick. There is a Caustic pop. The Caustic is, is enough to finish him off, but it actually goes to Magical. That Lightning Storm is going to allow them to get the kill. It's a very nice kill. They could just take the the tier 1 here if they want. There is a Dragon for him in 10 seconds though, and with a BKB, VP could be tempted to just fight this. And it looks like Navi isn't that interested after all, respecting VP here. That's yeah, up. I just, I really want to see Crystallize get involved a bit. But, it, you know, he's gone for this greedy and a Midas. He now has his BKB. And that, that says to me that they want to fight. If they can find a fight, though. Because VP is positioned quite defensively right now. Yeah, that uh, that is very true. VP, they're playing pretty defensive, especially uh, with this BKB over on no one. He's going to be so difficult to bring down. So it's just 150 gold away from his Meteor Hammer though, so that could help a little bit with trying to find these battles. Yeah, and a Bouncy oh, Rune, he he's able to though. steal, dust it up. But Pasha's actually going to TP away, and no one, uh, he doesn't have a Blink Dagger, so there's nothing to close Lance this gap. Oh, wait, so we're, while we're watching that fight, he has the song, the BKB. One more hit, and they're able to get it. Now the bar strike, Rolling Thunder's over. Crystallize doing so much damage. Meanwhile, over here, they haven't lost Zayek just yet. He's able to survive with the Shrine. Seneko has the Winter's Curse if he wants to hold anyone in place. Is he going to use it? They have the Dragon's Tail, but doesn't really matter. It seems they used the Winter's Curse already on the bottom lane. They glimpse Crystallize back, and so with their main damage output, glimpsed away. It looks like Na'Vi, they're going to try and retreat. Olo actually hit by the Spike Carapace. It is level 3. Now there's the Meteor Hammer leading into another Sun. He's chain stunned so long here on this Disruptor. Seneko, he doesn't have the Arc to burn, but he's burning down here. The Mana Burn, a few more right clicks. Seneko, he'll have the Arc to burn that should give him the Flying Vision. And that a few more Love Taps over on Solo. So three good kills, and they found no one. Forcing him to pop the BKB and TP away. Na'Vi, a big fight for them. Finding the Naga Siren and two other kills. Yeah, that's a pretty nice way to get involved. Radiant structures Killing Ramses. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, we talked about this. The BKB it is his timing. And Zayak, they've scouted out Ramses once again. They don't have Epicenter, but he goes for this. He knows he has the very longest table. They even apply the Veil, but a nice use of that Manta style. That was a great Manta style dodge there. High level plays by Ramses. It's actually easier for Nyx to get off the Impaled Meteor Hammer if it's at a longer range. Because that way um, it takes longer for the Impaled Projectile itself to arrive. So there is less time between the, the stun hitting and the Meteor hitting. Over here on the back lines, they tried to find Pasha, but he is going to walk away to safety. So Nako does have that Winter's Curse coming back up and they're realizing that Solo was dewarding. But this is going to be an easy tier 2 for the side of Na'Vi. And that only leaves one outer tower remaining for VP. Na'Vi, they've managed to get themselves the net worth advantage. Back to protection. A little bit awkward. They do get it. I'm curious to see what Magical is going to go for next. I really wouldn't mind seeing a Shiva's guy. He's going to go for a Bloodstone. It's a bit greedier, but it's still very strong. Just that heal, the mana regen. Very solid item overall. 
Yeah, it's, uh, it's, one thing we didn't talk about is this Meteor Hammer, it actually, in a way, accelerates Zyrax farm because it just one-shots these creep waves. And that means... Oh, for sure. Oh, over here, they're going forward. They have the Dragon Tail on top of Blizzy. He does have an Invisory, but it doesn't really matter. They brought Dust because they know there's an Nix Assassin in this game. You're out of your elements. So they pop two ultis for this. I feel like this isn't too terrible for Navi. Yeah, they like, smoke. They the dragon for him. Yeah, they smoked up behind him, but the smoke, at least over on the Disruptor, was popped by the next Assassin. So I don't think they're going to be able to find another kill from this. And Roger does have his BKB, so... Um, so Nico needs to be very conscious about the way he uses Crystallize it. goes in and he just absolutely eliminates that Enigma in a few hits. This Hyperstone really helping out. And they might think about going right into Roshan. The God Strength, it does have a little bit remaining. VP going for the scan. Oh, Seneco, go for the Arctic Burn. No. He didn't use the Arctic Burn, so he didn't have the vision over the trees. But someone they have definitely managed to find is Solo. He's going to TP away, but they have the Barra Strike as well as the Impale. Magical with the emphatic split earth to say, Solo, you're going back home. I wonder when Navi is going to try to go for this Roshan. It's a pretty big objective, but it's so risky to do against a Naga as well as an Enigma. Yeah, and talking of this Ramses Naga, instead of the Diffuser Blade, he's building the Eye of Scotty. Can you help me understand why that is? He just wants to survive the initial burst. He feels like that if he can kite out the Sven, he's gonna be fine in these fights. Like, you just want to make sure that you don't die to Sven jumping on you with a follow-up stun. That's the only thing you want to achieve as a Naga. At that point, you can take it from there, but that's just so important. So, uh, Zax, he's changed his mind away from that Aghanim Scepter and instead is getting the Yules. Just uh, a little bit more control for the side of Na'Vi. <laughs> Not like they didn't have enough already. I would personally really like to see him going for a Lotus Orb. Um, because VP has some pretty damn scary single target spells. As well as just the fact that you can purge the dust on yourself, which is quite a big deal. And on others as well, of course. Yeah, Blizzy, obviously someone who doesn't like being dusted as well, wants to be able to sit around in his sandstorm. Crystallize. On top lane. Yep. Maybe he does see them, they have vision here. Ramses, he has scary. the Eye of Scotty, they have the vision on top of Crystallize. They know he has the BKB though, so I think they're just not really that afraid. Look at how much damage Crystallize is taking from these bloody Naga illusions. Please use your Midas Crystallize. Oh, finally. I felt like it was a whole eternity where he hadn't used. Magical with the Haste Room, the Yules. He's probably going to find Solo just in time. No, didn't have the vision for it. Close, but not quite. Meanwhile, it looks like no one is actually going for an AC as well. And he's actually fairly close. He has no farming item, but he's still keeping up with the Leshrac rather well. 0-0 zero, zero, and 7. That's the classic Dragonite score. Yeah, it's, I mean, uh, we talked about no one going for some sort of initiation item, but it looks like he's decided his role in these fights is just to be a tank. Yeah, I guess they want to initiate with a song into Static Storm, which is a very solid option for sure. Roger, they've now scouted him out, but he knows he's being seen. That's why they had the Malapin, but Crystallize on the back line. And once again, they take down this Enigma very, very quickly. <laughs> Yeah, three hits, all it takes. And is that enough for them to be able to go into Roshan? Potentially, yeah. Um, I Yeah, it doesn't look like Roger has buyback, so they have 30 seconds to take this Rosh, and that should be ample time. Ramses, however, is being very annoying with these Nagra illusions. He's just cutting all the waves from this point. It's, uh, it, it just means that even once they get this Roshan, it's going to be a long while before the side of Navi are able to get their push on. Alright, so the Sven ulti did run out. Roche is going down rather slowly, but Enigma is still 5 seconds away from being alive again. Yeah, so they are going to get this Roche uncontested. Crystallize has to make it to the jungle to use his Midas. And, and he blinks up to use it. I, uh, I agree with that right there. Oh, they see Ramses now. 
And he doesn't have a manta, so he can't do some fancy manta dodge. If he tries to TP, he could go down here. Yeah, Zayak, is he gonna be juked up even though he doesn't know he's being juked? He does have... Okay, so Ramsey, he's TP away. They found him. Oh, that TP, it's gonna be cancelled. They have the Meteor Hammer as well after it. Chris Lights, he's right there. Doesn't have Godrex, but I don't think he needs it. With the help of Lizzy, so much chain stun. Uh, just look at this chain stun in the death summary. It's uh, it's uh, a whole bunch of... It's 10 seconds worth. And that doesn't count the end of the split earth. Because he was dead by then. Feels bad, man. Actually, feels good, man. Naga dying. Always nice. <laughs> you are so prejudiced against the Slith uh, Slytherin? Slytherin? What, what, do you know the name of that race that Naga Siren is? Dyer's I think it's Slytherin. <laughs> Anyway. I don't know, you think I use my spare time to look up on Naga lore? Come on, man. And she says it. She, she says it. It's one of her voice lines. Like, you think all I the play Naga? You know, it's such a relaxing experience. I mean, the enemy team are like, oh no, not Naga. But it's a great game for you. Get out. Anyway, Navi, a bit more serious now. They uh, Actually, they put the Aegis on Magical. I thought they might put it on Crystallize so that he can uh, be their front line. Frontline man, but this last remaining tier two is very low. I like this from Navi because on Sven you're scared. super reliant on your god strength and your BKB, and you only have one of both. So as soon as you die without them, you're pretty much useless anyway. But Naga can, I mean, Leshra can use all of his HP and mana twice very efficiently because he doesn't really have big cooldowns. Yeah, so it's so it's kind of like a storm spirit in that respect when it's a you know magic damage based hero. Yep, for sure. Alright, so no one does have the money to finish up his AC if he wants to. Invisibility. As his level 18 as well, which is a lot less strong than it used to be because the Elder Dragon form no longer pierces BKB, so it isn't really a free scatty anymore, which was one of the saddest changes for a Dragon Knight. But still, it's very nice when the BKBs get destroyed. Eh? Yeah, the, the, the pings do come. They had some sort of idea that the Dragonite was here, but TP it away, they're not going to find him. They're going into this jungle, and Pasha is positioning here. It's brilliant to break this smoke, I thought. But no, he actually just dives down into that room. They have the song to be able to reset, so I don't think anyone should go down. But they're pursuing for Naga, not staying on them, and it means they're going to be able to kill off this sand. This Pangolier. Oh, he leaps to the low ground, but he is stunned up by the use of that spike. Carapace. That Naga Siren song, I thought he was just going to stick around and stay with the Pangolier. He didn't. And um, Zayats capitalized beautifully. Very well played by this Nyx. And once again, this is kind of an opening, but it doesn't look like it's going to be long enough for, uh, for Navi to attempt a high ground push. They can maybe deal a little bit of damage. I wouldn't expect anything significant from this pickle. Yeah, the lane is coming here in the mid lane. So Magical, if he wants with the, the Aegis, it's only going to be around for another minute and a half. So it looks like he's more than happy to put some pressure on. But they have the stun, but the Yule Scepter interrupting it. The Static Storm, it doesn't really matter. Meanwhile, on the back line, Crystallize, he's killed one. He is affected by the Diffuser Blade, and he's losing all his mana. But Blizzy, he's here. They're pinging out onto Ramsey. Busy, he misses with that stun. He doesn't connect onto the real one. And Crystallize is being slowed up. By the Eye of Scully Illusions, they use the Winter's Curse, but it's only onto Illusion. And now Pasha rolling forward on the back lines. Meanwhile, they lose Busy. They're going to TP out with the BKB over here on Magical. But the Black Hole interrupts the BKB and the rest of the side of Na'Vi. They've left Magical by himself. He yours himself into the air, but I don't think it really matters. Now they have the Dragon Tail and no one is going to be able to get that kill. Na'Vi, a disastrous high ground attempt. I'm not sure if you caught that, but Seneco actually used this Winter's Curse on a creep. The idea is nice of just keeping people in place for a few seconds, but in practice the creep just instantly died and he was stunned for like half a second, so I'm gonna say that was not worth it from Navi, and now they could potentially lose a Leshrac buyback here if VP does decide to commit for it. Yeah, I saw he stunned something that wasn't a hero. I thought maybe it was a Naga illusion, but I didn't realize it was just a creep. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Do you think that was a bit of a misclick, or he really was just trying to reset the fight with that Winter's Curse on anything? Yeah, I felt like he was Dyer's just buying, trying to buy a little bit of time, but ultimately not very effective. And uh, Ramses, uh, I know last time we talked about the Scuddy, and 
and in between. And now he's gone for the Diffuser Blade. So he has so much ability to kite that Sven, especially without his BKB, because he's slowed by the Scarty, affected by the Diffusal. And we saw how effective it was on that high ground. Yeah, Naga is getting scarier and scarier. I would start to get a little bit sweaty if I was Navi. There is a Tome on the floor next to the Radiant base, by the way. Roger does finally pick it up. No littering allowed next to the VP base. Meanwhile, Navi going for a smoke. This could be pretty obvious because no one is pushing the lane. So, Pasha, in this bottom lane, Blink Tagger as well as Guardian Greaves. I feel it's been a while since I've had a look at his items. Aside of Na'Vi, they really want to take a fight even after that bad one. But VP, they know about this and they're just sitting in their, on their high ground. And they're going to be just fine. And their lanes, they're even taken care of just because of these Naga Siren illusions. And we've seen this time and time again. Teams just trying to go for a smoke, but Naga is just pushing out all the lanes without any risk. So it's pretty much impossible to find these pickles. Because the enemy team can just sit in the base while Naga Illusions do all of the work. Thanks, Ice Frog. <clears throat> <laughs> that, I mean, the, the most obnoxious thing I've ever seen is when the Naga Siren teams get ahead, when she just uh, uh, sits on a high ground and sends her creeps to cut wave one, wave two, and wave three. It's uh, That is an unpleasant experience to play against. Just, there you go, just more highlights on the map. I hear the yours, but it's just for an Argus Iron Illusion, I think. He really wanted to bottle that Hastry Magical. And I wonder what the game plan now is for Navi, because they really need to keep pushing lanes and finding kills, but it's so difficult. Well, so... they have found someone here in the bottom lane, the Yules from Blizzy. They need a follow-up stun, but I don't know if they're going to be able to get it. Pasha, he doesn't have the Swashbuckle, but he does have the Rolling Thunder, has his TP. So Rolling Thunder TP, they're not quite there with the Winter's Curse to interrupt it on Seneko. Yeah, he couldn't quite day. get in range. He does have a blink now on the Winter Wyvern, which could be potentially huge. Then again, Rojo is working his way towards the Lincoln Sphere, but until he gets it, his black holes are still going to be very easy to cancel. And this Naga, they've all had to rotate just to clear her illusions out of the jungle. It, it's definitely getting very tough for the side of Na'Vi. And just looking at the net worth graph, I can... Uh, I can bet that their lead, you can see it slipping away and things starting to dip in favor of VP and the Naga. Yeah, and if you look at the win probability, Dota Plus is already saying that VP is leading by quite a bit. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, the only time it ever went even was when Na'Vi had the Aegis and off that high ground push, it looks like they, I know Dota Plus used to love Spect games and now it seems to love Naga. Even Dota Plus is saying that Naga is broken, come on. So, Zayak uh, over here, he has the Gemma True Sight as well as the Blink Dagger. And it looks like he did decide against that Ags. Uh, sorry, against that Yule Scepter just wants the Ags because maybe because... Uh, does the Ags help you push or does it just help, you know, de-push once that Naga Siren starts knocking on your base? Well, it reduces the cooldown of your Impale and it makes your Spike Carapace stun regardless of uh, people hitting you. So, in some ways it does does help push as well as push. I wouldn't call it like a pushing item necessarily. Yeah, it's, uh, it is impressive the amount of farm he's been able to get on this four position Nyx though. And you can just see the difference between Seneko and Solo. One playing true, true six position and Seneko uh, already got a blink dagger on his uh, Winter Wyvern. Yeah, it's pretty nice to have for sure. At the same time, Crystallize working his way towards um, a blood twin actually, and he finished it completely. So if they do get the jump on Naga and they can get some chain stuns in, even with 4000 HP and 37 armor, she's not gonna be invulnerable. In fact, I believe that if she's stunned for five seconds, she's just gonna go down like any other hero. Yeah, it's, uh, the Naga Siren, however, I think she really has reached peak Ooh. Naga. Are they smoke in to go for the Roche? Does Navi expect this? It doesn't look like it because they're super split and they have to deal with these Naga illusions. Yeah, that's the thing. You never know where VPR because your lanes, they're constantly being pushed out. 
And Ramses, he's now committing to towards the Roshan. Nako's here. He's put the wards up, but he doesn't know that they're already inside the pit. He's just put these down, so they don't know they're in the side of the pit. Now they saw Pasha coming out of the pit, so now they know. What do they? It doesn't look like they saw it. They Rosh should have seen it. Roshana is very low, but the rest of their team, they're all set up here. I don't know if they weren't expecting that Rosh, or they're hoping to still get a pick off after it. It just looks like they didn't see it. See Solo now? This is a nice. Impale and crystallize with that Bloodthorn. Just eliminating the Disruptor. And now the Witch is cursed. They're holding the Dragonite in place. But they do have the Naga Siren pretty damn nearby. Blizzy caught by the there. They have the vision for him. Thanks to this ward. And Chrysalis, he's just tangling up with the Naga. Illusion's not the real Naga. Pasha comes in and there's more than enough damage. They pop the BKB over on Chrysalis. He's using his Godshot and it does allow him to clear through those Naga Illusions. Now they have the stun. They're controlling the Dragonite. The crits, it's a lot of damage. They have the stun. And Chrysalis, he blinks forwards and he's going to find no one. Now they're looking for more. Navi, they didn't lose anyone in that fight. They're looking for a bit more. Magical, he's found the Naga Siren. Yules up into the air. They don't have split up. They forced the buyback out of no one. And the side of Navi, they can continue pushing if they want this tier 3 mid. It's pretty low, but they are going to respect the Dragonite buyback. Even with an Aegis and Cheese, it's still very tough for VP to fight into all of these stuns from Navi. Like, the moment the first stun comes out of no one, he has to pop BKB because if he doesn't, he's going to be stunned for 10 seconds. Yeah, uh, I, I really lo love what they did there on Navi. They, even without the Aegis, they, they weren't afraid. They realized they have to be taking the fights because that's where their advantage is. And so they just go for it and it results in two good kills and a buyback. Roger does have his link against now, so I, I expect some really big black holes coming out from him. With the BKB as well as Lincoln's, there is nothing that can cancel his black hole. So if he gets a good one, he could potentially just straight up win VP the game. So Magical has the Shiva's Guard as well as this Bloodstone. Only 13 charges remaining. I thought he might have been involved in a few more kills, but it looks like uh, after that death, he hasn't managed to regain any charges. They're not as important as they used to be. Could see a fight happening here. Ramses, they do have the detection on top of Sykes. They have the stun, but he uses Spike Carapace in time. The Winter Wyvern has the Winter's Curse if he wants to use it. It's not actually able to save Sykes. They use the BKB magical. They've killed Solo. There's a Bloodstone charge. What is he waiting for? It's a big black hole. This is what he was waiting for. The Winter Wyvern, but the Lincoln Sphere. He didn't know about it, so it didn't stop the black hole. And they wasted the Winter's Curse, but there's still a big epicenter. They use the Song of the Siren. And is this going to allow them to reset or back off? There's no buyback here over on no one, so he eats the cheese. They yield up on top of the Pango, but they're still focusing the Dragonite. They know there's no buyback buyback on this man blizzy on the back line taking a lot of damage from the naga siren they have the stun to hold back the sven and they're retreating over here on no one over here naga siren rams he's he's big bad and he has the ages crystallize they're still fighting into him is he gonna be able to cut him off he hits him with the blood thorn, but it doesn't really matter there's no mana left blizzy he has the stun magical doesn't have any mana Ramses. He's just a tank. He has the heart. He'll soon be hearing at healing at the whole side of Navi. They have no mana. They have nothing. But I take that back. They managed to kill off Pasha. Getting a bit too aggressive on the high ground. Now Blizzy comes back in. He tries to get no one, but he misses with that stun. Ramses, they're getting very low. They're chasing him. But it doesn't matter. There's, you have no mana left over on Zyax. Over here, you're going to lose him. Meanwhile, Magical, he's trying to kill off no one. He, they have lost the Nyx Assassin to the Naga Siren. They use the st Static Storm, but they've lost. Roger, once again, now no one, he's very low. Crystallized, they pop the BKB, but Magical, he's managed to get a bit of mana back into this fight. He has the BKB, but the Rolling Thunder, the buyback here from the Pangolin, has got them the kill over onto Blizzy. Magical with the BKB, TP out, and that's the end of the fight, and I don't really know what happened there. They got the Black Hole of Dreams, but they just didn't have the damage. They got the Black Hole on both the important coils for Navi, but... Even the Naga just couldn't deal enough damage to get through this super tanky Lash and Sven. They need like some Aghanims on this Enigma to make sure that they can actually do something with this black hole. Yeah, I asked what Seneca was waiting for and it was Ramses. pretty clear. Um, is he, he's looking for Magical. Magical, he has the Yule Scepter if he wants to use it. Uh, he was waiting for the split up, but now he's affected by the Diffuser Blade. Now if he, he goes for the ult, it doesn't matter. Pasha there on top of him, even more illusions. And this is going to be a dead magical. He uses himself. Seneko, he does have his Winter's Curse if he wants to use it. He has to use it to save the life of Magical. And, but Magical, he's still probably going to drop to that illusion. Do they have anything to save him? This DK, Dragonite, he's not able to pursue forward. And Pasha does get the kill over Magical. He has buyback. But now Crystallize stunned up. 
There is no BKB here on this map, but it's just come off cooldown. So he's able to use it. Pasha has the Rolling Thunder. No one. He's going to be able to TP away. Ramsey's with the Song of Siren. They're all going to back up because Na'Vi of the two buybacks. Very nice awareness by Ramsey's going for that, knowing that uh, Magical didn't have his Bloodstone and didn't have his BKB. So very heads up play by him. Seneca was holding on to that Winter's Curse for such a long time. Well, was he trying to get it on a specific person? I think he just wanted to uh, to kill Pasha with it. Because if you use it on the Naga, she's probably not going to die. Yeah, so so he's looking to get, get it on top of uh, Pasha when he's right next to the Naga Illusions. And he, interestingly enough, Crystallize built himself a butterfly now. So that's going to help a little bit against all of the Naga annoyingness. I still feel like he needs an MKB as soon as possible though, because the moment this DK pops his BKB, Crystallize doesn't really deal damage to him anymore. So, Na'Vi, they've taken a few... Uh, well, it felt like two bad fights in a row. And I'm just having a look at the buyback status. And they don't have one on the Knicks, they don't have one on Blizzy, they don't have one on Magical. So, VP, is this their time, you know? The push to get a kill and then finally get to high ground. They have a Naga anytime in the late game is their time. So they can just keep relaxing. Because as we've seen so many times before, in the super late game and the late game in general, the team that has the safest ways of pushing lanes tends to have the advantage. And that's definitely the team with an Naga Siren here. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, I I, I want to talk about no one for a second. His, his item build, it feels a bit eclectic to me. I, I do like the Heaven's Halibuds, but it's usually an item we see come out, you know, a tiny bit earlier against this fan. I mean, no one just recognizes that he needs to be tanky. He, there is nothing else he needs to do. Like, he just needs to be in the middle of the fight, maybe throw out two stuns, but mostly just alleviate the pressure on this Naga. So, Na'Vi, it feels like they're a tiny bit on the back foot. Do they just have to try and keep up this aggression, really hope to get a pick-off? I feel like if they take the fights well and they get a good pick-off at the start, they can certainly still win fights because stuns, they remain relevant throughout the game. So, if they find the right fights, I feel like they can definitely win them. But last fight, they were fighting into an Aegis and a Cheese, so it's just harder as a consequence of that. Well, I, I'm honestly a, a bit worried about the side of Na'Vi because just Ramses, all these items, all that health, he has 4.4k HP as well as a butterfly. And uh, I don't know if there's an MK beyond this Sven yet. And it just feels like they're not able to touch him. If you can kill Ramses' team, you can kill him as well, just because of the blood turn. So as long as you can get a good jump, you can kill some supports. Ramses in fight shouldn't be a problem. But it's all about finding that jump. It's not really about Naga in fights, it's about the map control that she gives. Yeah, now she's uh, asserted herself in this top lane here. But meanwhile, actually, the rest of her team, I thought they might be farming, you know, a, a bit more aggressively. Radiant but they, they have to take care of these other two waves. It's like no one is getting close to his 25. And at the same time, we always speak about Solo as a position 6 support. But he's well on his way towards an Aghanim Scepter, which could be pretty big in this game. So this game, it is going fairly long. We're at the 46 minute mark. Is there anything crazy that can turn this game on its head? Is there any item or is it just standard? The Naga Siren team, they push in all the lanes. Eventually, they're able to push racks and just this slow suffocating death for Na'Vi. I'm never ruling out something crazy, but I feel like until Roche spawns, it's probably gonna be fairly calm. Unless Navi or Fifi decides that they just need the surprise factor. Just look at Sven struggling with these Naga illusions. This is torture. He has a DD room and he can't kill an illusion. Yeah, I crystallize. Uh, he's built a butterfly for himself. I think that's. That's such an interesting item, Crystallize. He does have the money uh, for his MKB if he's willing to go buyback, but I assume that's something he wants to hold on to. He's so close to Ramses, he doesn't even realize it. Yeah, just has to stun the Naga Siren Illusions and walk away. That's uh, that's not where you want to be when you're the carry of... 
Just imagine having 750 GPM and having to run away wow, from illusions. Right. Feels bad, man. The, and, the gr and the crazy thing is, Crystallize with his Midas, he was on top of this Nargisarium for so long, but now Ramses has a fairly significant 5k gold lead. It's just, it is the Nargis effect. Eventually, you get to that point where it seems so, so tough to play the game. But yep. they've managed to find a nice pickup here on the top lane. Solo overextending without the rest of his team. Marshall's there. They do have the Guardian Greaves from the Pangolier. Just trying to save him for that little while. But he will go down. It's very nice that uh, Blizzy has his 25 now. Because he's going to have the 50% Sandstorm slow and blind. And that's a very good way of dealing with this Naga in teamfights. They do have a Hex on Blizzy as well. So it's not like they're completely out of options. It's just very hard to make these fights happen. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm just watching the side of Na'Vi and they they just struggle so hard with these uh, Naga Siren Illusions, even um, clearing out the waves. And it just makes me wonder what happens when they get to a fight. But uh, there's an interesting item picked up for Ramses with his BKB. And that says to me he's looking not just to farm anymore, but maybe to fight. It's telling me that he wants to farm, but he wants to have another layer of safety. Great. <laughs> I... Roger, closing in on a refresher though. So that's gonna be even more scary for Navi now. VP, their patience, it's just. It's so impressive because uh, I would think, you know, they can probably feel that they're ahead. Meanwhile, in the trees, they didn't actually get the catch onto Zayax. They do have a gem over here onto Pasha. So they are able to get on, on top of the spike carapace. It doesn't matter because he's in that rolling thunderstorm. And now with the Naga Siren Illusions as well as the Sun, they're going to get that pick off on the next assassin. And he was the gem carrier for the side of Na'Vi. Doesn't have buyback either, so this should be a free Roche for VP. Yeah, and Roche chance up. Potentially triple black hole for Roche in here. Yeah, and now that he has the Lincoln Sphere as well as the BKB, there is no way for the side of Na'Vi to be able to cancel it. And it's even going to be extra difficult for Crystallize to burst him down because he Your can't get off both the Storm Hammer as well as the Blood Burn. He does have his MTB now, so that's going to help a little bit, but still. It just feels very hard for Na'Vi right now. With this Aegis, are VP going to look to push? I, I feel like they can definitely suffocate Na'Vi. They've been out of their base for far too long, I think. Can they push? Probably not, because they're into a Leshrac, Winter Wyvern, mixed with Aghanim, Sand King, so I feel like it's quite unlikely that even with this Aegis they're going to be able to breach high ground. We could be in for another 90 minute game here, because neither team seems to be able to push, and VP can choke Navi, but they can't finish the job. Yeah, but at least they can, you know, pile on a tiny bit more pressure, like, with games... With the Naga Siren, I, I don't often expect to see creeps, you know, past this halfway mark once the Naga gets to this size. We have a single creep wave passing that point, so that's nice. I Proves that there is still hope in this game, after all. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's nice for the side of Na'Vi, but it's, I think Ramses is certainly going to start to shut it down. We've spoken a lot about how strong this Naga is, but at the same time, we cannot underestimate how strong Navi is in fights, even when Roger has potentially three black holes and they have a Naga with Aegis. I feel like Navi can still win fights if they start off with the proper initiation. And and what is the proper initiation? Just being able to get through to those supports or the or the Enigma. I mean, just getting a chain stun on a single hero and taking him down at the start, and it looks like Navi's patience has ended. They want to take a fight right now. They're yeah, they, done with Naga. They smoked up and they had the scan, but I don't think they're going to be able to correctly identify which Naga is real. Over here, Seneko. His dust breaks. He knows one of those is real, but he's actually just going to leap away to safety. And now, on the side of EP, they smoked up themselves. They didn't find Magical. Not quite in range for that ensnare. Now, oh, they kill Roger oh, on the back lines. Start. Oh god, I'm getting T-Tours, they have the song, but Magical, he has the BKB, so he's still outputting damage. They've lost solo, Roger buys back, and the whole side of EP, they're just teeping away from this fight. I could look at you all day. That's a decent start. 
Dyer's bottom tower. I'm forcing the Roger buyback, killing Solo, and he doesn't have buyback, so this could be a little bit of an opening to try and maybe take back a little bit of the map control that they lost over the past 10 minutes. So what happened to Roger? Unfortunately, I missed it because I was too focused on the Naga Siren. Well, the rest of Navi was wrapping around and they just ran into him and were like, Hey man, how are you doing? You're not going to be triple black holding today. Nope. Not even a single one for now. It's very disciplined from Roger that he didn't finish his refresher, so he did have buyback, even though it turned out not to be necessary. Yeah, he did use that buyback, however, so, you know, Navi, they, they're still a bit on the back foot, but if they're able to get another pick from him, they'll know they can have fights without Black Hole. Yeah, and on top of that, they only need to kill three 4.5k heroes, and then they'll have killed Ramses without buyback. Exactly, it's it's just so simple. Yep. <laughs> Just oh. kill the ancient. I mean, it's not that difficult. I mean, it's it's in the name of the game. Your, your aim is to, you know, the name of the game is to defend the ancient. It's not to kill the opponent's ancient. And it looks like that's what Navi as well as VP are doing with the lack of pushing. Yep, they're just playing the game. It's meant to be played the way it's meant to be played. This is this is clearly what Ice Frog intended. You know, no one ever to go high ground. Alright, is it time to start vouching for the 20k gold I win button again? Because <laughs> Ramses is halfway there. At, at some point, you, you have to wonder. Um, I know it would give you a bit less map control, but is it not worth maybe like letting Solo clear through some of these creep waves so he can get an item like his... Oh, he has his axe. I take everything back. Well, he could still really use something like a Glamour Cape and a Blink to get it off reliably. I totally agree with you, but at the same time, you're gonna have to tell carry players to stop farming. That's risky. Yeah, I mean, what is, what is he meant to do? He's almost quite nine slotted. Uh, sorry, the Aegis doesn't count, so I'll take it back. He's only only eight slotted here on on the Ramses Naga Siren. He doesn't even have a moonshot. What kind of pleb is he? Come on, oh, let's uh, buy it now. Oh, obviously, he needs the uh, needs that moonshot. But what what are you holding on to this much gold for? It looks like he is buying the Moonshard, actually. I would totally just give the Moonshard to Solo so he can find. I mean, honestly, it would, would probably pay off because then your Disruptor, he could get items to either be more survival in the fight like a BKB or just do that little bit more. All shenanigans aside, Solo did finally hit level 20, and that's when he gets 180 GPM, which is huge for a uh, Disruptor. And it's gonna allow him to catch up to the Wyvern and eventually be relevant in this game going into the late game. Yeah, they found the Pangolier here in the bottom lane, but it doesn't really matter, Pasha, with his Rolling Thunder. Oh! I didn't realize they've managed to get Seneko down here, so Rolling Thunder, it will end eventually. He blinks forward, they need the stun, but. With the help of that swashbuckle, he's able to close the distance, but Blizzy, he's on top of him. Blizzy also has a Hex, by the way. So the side of Na'Vi, so much control on them, and that's another gem for them. These are very nice kills they're getting. Um, he does have buyback on the Pango, so it's once again not going to lead into a push, but it's still a very nice kill. Oh, solo. Yeah, they have the Yords on top of him. Magical, and the Hex follow-up. It slides, and that's going to be another kill. Two pickoffs in quick Is it succession. Gonna be up? Uh, so, no. <laughs> it's gonna be hard to do anything with this, but it's still very nice that they get kills. It's something at least. So, right. they get two good pickoffs across the map, but you're just, you know, you're pointing out the point. The main issue with the game is Navi, it just feels like they're never able to get any objectives, even when they get these great pickoffs. It looks like they might be able to force some buybacks here. Because they do have one of the best talents in the game on Lash Track, the plus 40 Edict Explosions. You're just gonna completely tear through buildings. So I would expect some buybacks here from VP and maybe even the Enigma just jumping in with the Black Hole, killing Magical. Yeah, it's Navi. This, uh, we never expected them to be make it 
to the VP side of the map. And this tower I assume, is just going to evaporate. Get the stun on top of the DK. But they're sending in the Naga Siren Illusions now. Magical, he's the only one in the front lines. The rest of them, they're sitting back ready to counter initiate. And he'll have that Diabolic Edict back up pretty damn soon. He kills the creep wave off Ramsey's pops the BKB, but he's not going in. And is this just going to be a melee barracks? They're, they're not committing the buybacks for, from Solo or Pasha either, but the song, it's caught a whole bunch of them. It's caught four of them. The only one not affected was Suneko, the static form, as well as the black hole. They're not able to cancel this. They use the Winter's Curse, but he has the Refresher. Magical, he's able to live all through this, but the black hole, they've caught the spread. Magical, can he stop this? There's no BKB. He does, but Magical, he's gone down now. He buys back to be able to get back into sight, but they've lost Crystallize. Well, they haven't lost him just yet, but they will eventually. It's the epicenter of Virus. Like, they come back, and there is the third black hole. They have lost Crystallize. They're holding Blizzy in place with Pasha, the Rolling Thunder, a little bit more damage. And now the rest of the side of Na'Vi, they need to retreat. Magical, he TP'd back into this fight, and Pasha, he's actually got vision of Magical. Stuns him up. He needs a little bit more. They do have the lift. But they're dragging him back, affected by the Glimmer Cape. They do have... They don't have the detection. I take it back. The slow on top of Pasha. He will have that swashbuckle as well as the four stuff with the help of Zayak and his own Yule Sector Scepter. It's a nice double impale. And it has allowed Magical to be able to escape. Zayak's TP away. They have the vision. So he will have to go down for his distract. And they all have buybacks right now. But once again, we see the team that gets impatient gets punished. Yeah, Multiple uh, buybacks going to be forced out here from Na'Vi. I thought it was going so well when they were able to get that tier 3, but uh, they just really set up a really great fight. The Black Hole's controlling both Magical as well as Crystallize, and he wasn't able to output the damage he wanted to do. The Ramsey's with the song. They don't have another Black Hole, but they do have a Static Storm. They're on top of Magical. They know he doesn't have buyback. They have vision for him. They've lost the Nyx Assassin, but it doesn't really matter because they're about to lose something really bigger. Pasha is hexed up, but they've lost the track. Dead for 120 seconds. Now they're on top of the Sand King. He bought back in this engagement. And Pasha looking for Crystallize. Not willing to roll that deep. Because Ramsey's the rest of his team. They're busy focusing on Rax. It's two versus the five man. They have the Sun Crystallize. He really just wants the Captain of Solo. But Naga Siren of Rams. And I think he's ready to fight out Crystallize. It doesn't matter about your BKB. It doesn't matter about your God Strength. And GG versus Pro in a 60 minute game. Eventually do close it out. I'm just happy that Navi got impatient because this game could have gone on for a long time if they didn't look for that push. I feel like this game was pretty much 50-50 because neither team really had